Why do we suffer? Why do we experience joy? Why does it look like that so many people out there enjoying their life, having everything they want, and other people they're struggling for their existence? Happiness and distress, summer, winter, the heat and the cold, male, female, black and white, left and right, the good and the bad. Everything in this world is under the influence of dualities and we living beings we experience this world through our senses through our perception and of the influence of our mind in sanskrit we call it raga and dvesha attachment and aversion yes no yes no it's always the same pattern you see something you like you agree yes you see something you don't like? No, no, I don't want. But where does this decision originate? Where does it come from? How do you know what is good and what is bad? Because you and me, we are two different persons eating the same food. You like it, I don't like it. But the food was good for you. But for me, it was disgusting, I couldn't eat it. You watch a movie, I watch a movie. I like the movie, you don't like the movie. Or the most beautiful girl of my dreams appears. And I fall in love with her completely. And you look at her and you think, what's going on with him? She doesn't look nice at all. Because you have a different taste than me. And all this yes and no, attachment and aversions, we create already in our childhood. Everything we see, everything we experience, everything our parents tell us, everything we see in the television, we learn in school. Everything we perceive, we already process in a very young age and we decide what we like and what we dislike. Of course, we're not speaking now from previous lives where we already take a lot of package with us in this life. No, let's talk just about this one lifetime. There's so many desires we cultivate, so many wishes, so many directions. And let me tell you, it will not stop. It will get more and more because this is the nature of the mind. Attachment and aversion and to come out of this rabbit hole it's very difficult all the happiness we experience is very dependent on what we see feel touch taste hear smell in the outside through our senses but real happiness is not temporary it is not depending on all the external circumstances real peace and harmony real bliss you can find within let me give you another example very simple we just had two weeks of summer extensive heat burning heat and all the farmers they can't wait for rain on the other hand i want to have a picnic maybe it's my birthday i want to meet some friends i want to have a picnic outside in the afternoon and guess what all of a sudden some rain clouds arriving and it starts to pouring rain and thunder and lightning and storm and forget it you can't go out on a picnic anymore and i will get so upset i planned my whole week i already prepared everything i called my friends and now it's raining i mean why why is this happening to me life is so unfair oh god i hate this weather i hate my life yeah. and the farmer he will be so happy oh finally some rain finally the vegetables can grow the earth will not dry out and he will be so happy and appreciates the rain. The same rain, but everyone reacts completely different to the rain. So we are so depending on the happiness in the outside. We are so depending on circumstances and we define our happiness. Isn't it astonishing? Instead of saying, okay, it's rain. Maybe some people will like it. We planned a picnic, but you know what? Let's meet in my place. Let's have a nice movie evening. We can eat all the snacks. We can spend some time together. Anyways, it was so hot now for two weeks. It's nice to be at home. It's cooling down, some rain. So you can immediately shift your mindset, your consciousness. And see the positive in every negative situation. Of course, that is not enough to be completely happy, forever blissful and in harmony. But what I would like to give you today is the understanding that we determine our happiness okay you could say what about the people suffering living on the streets 
having no food. And I'm sure it is very difficult. And if nobody tells them, if nobody shows them another way, they could get stuck in their misery. But I know countries, I know people living on the street, especially in India. I met so many people living a simple life, only having enough to survive. And they are so happy. They're living in the moment. They're having a nice family. When you meet them, they give everything they have. They just want to share. Maybe they don't know anything else or they accepted their karma, their circumstances. But still, they are completely in harmony. On the other side, in our society, we have everything. We have flat screens, we have iPhones, we have satellites. We can travel all around the globe and still we are not satisfied. Trust me, you can decide to be happy. And if it's not enough to just decide for happiness, then work on it. What helps for me is go to bed early, rise early. Practice yoga, meditation, learn breathwork, pranayama, study the ancient yogic texts from India, pray to God, meditate, chant the divine names of the Lord, clean your house, clean your body, create a sattvic environment. Sattva means pure, cleanliness, the mode of goodness. Automatically, just by clean everything, remove things you don't need, choose your association, visit holy places, give in charity, help other people, all these things will make you happy. But then again, it could happen that you just run after happiness in the outside, arrange everything in a way so that you can be happy. And don't get me wrong, that's okay. But this is still not the happiness I'm talking about. The real happiness lies within when you realize who you are, that you're not this body, you're not the thinking, you're not the mind, you're not the voice in your head constantly telling you who you are, what you need to buy, what you need to avoid. Just for a moment, observe yourself. Observe your hands, both sides, your fingers, your nails, your legs, your chest. Is this really you, this body? I hand, I head, I body. No, right? You say my hand, my body, my head, it is something you possess. And maybe you say now, what is he talking? I have no voice in my head. There's no monkey mind. But if you can listen to your voice telling you there's no voice in your head, means you must be someone else, right? Because you can see the voice. You can hear and perceive the voice. So I'm asking you, who are you? Are you in there? Are you in there? Please think about this. Maybe close your eyes, contemplate, meditate, feel your body, analyze the chat in your head, observe your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and try to really understand and ask yourself this question, who are you? I'm burning to know what was your experience. What could you perceive, reflect, understand? What does it do inside of you? Or maybe you say, I don't believe in it. I'm my body, I'm my mind, and that's also fine. But let's share it together. Let's talk about this, because this knowledge will make you free. Everything starts by understanding who we are. This is the basic, this is the essence, not only for spiritual practices. No, this is the essence to understand life, the mechanics of life, the dualities, and to find the real happiness within. Thank you. Om. Tat, sat.